Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have the famous Jim Brown, the designer of the Windrider 17. We're going to go through all his thoughts here. And, <laughs> and uh, we're going to go over the design, the, how the origins of the Windrider 17. We're actually sitting in his Windrider 17 right now. It's the, the turtle. Box turtle. The box turtle. But we're going to sit down. We're going to discuss the, the origins, the design, what was bad, what is good. And, hey uh, guys, my name's Ziggy, and I'm out boat camping the barrier islands of the Gulf of Mexico. So jump aboard, because I'm going to take you bastards sailing. Mm -hmm. What else have we got on We're actually into the jib, sun cover, and a roll-up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for people that are leaving their boats out in the sun with the mast up and the jib sail on, you pretty much have to leave the jib on if you're going to leave the mast up. And the jib's rolled up around the jib stay in the sun. The sun will kill the sail. It'll eat it up It'll, in one summer. You know, it'll it'll kill yeah. the sail. Oh, yeah. And uh, and so uh, you have to take it off to a sailmaker, um, and uh, and have them stitch on a, what they call a sun cover. And there is a material now. Thank gosh, they've got a, a nice lightweight acrylic mm -hmm. cloth for sun covers on small sails. And uh, I can't remember what it, I think it cost me sixty bucks, but it was so long ago. Yeah, I, can't I did remember. mine, and I think it was about sixty bucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, if you're going to leave the the, the the jib out in the sun, you you got to you got to put a, put a, a sun strip. They yeah. call it a sun strip. So you see it. mine on the videos. <clears throat> Usually, when you roll it up, it's a dark color on the yeah. jibs. Whereas yeah. when I had mine, they said, "Sorry, we don't have any black." And well, I don't care what it looks like. Put yeah. white on there, and that's why when my jib's rolled up, it's white. Where uh -huh. generally it's a dark color. It's the green or the black or the yeah. turquoise or the black. I got the black one. The other one's, I don't know what color comes out on the end of it, but yeah. But that, but it's a dark color. As mine's white, but it's that UV strip. And I'm in the Texas sun, and it's out there a lot. I'll set up yeah. my dock, and it it still yeah. looks brand new. Well, mine was here for 15 years in the sunlight, and it, it was mm -hmm. fine. Yes. Yeah. And if you're going to leave your your boat out in the sun with the mast up. Uh, at, on a trailer or at the dock or anywhere out in the sun, if you're going to leave it with the mast up, that means the jib has to be up there in the sun. It's rolled up, but the sun will eat up the outside of the roll. So it's important to uh, take the thing to a sailmaker and have him install what's called a sun strip. And it's just a, a band of cloth down the trailing edge of the sail, the leech. It's special cloth. It's highly ultraviolet resistant. It's a, it's a uh, acrylic plastic thread cloth. And um, he, he can stitch one of those on there for, we don't know, maybe 60, 75 bucks. Uh, that when the sail is rolled up, only that strip is exposed to the sun and it'll protect the rest of the sail. Uh, if you take the mast down, but still leave the jib attached to it hanging around out there in the sun it's it's no good you got to have that sun cover on there and the great thing um, uh, ab about uh, le leaving the uh, the mast up with the jib up and the sail cover on it the sun strip on it is that now you can take the mainsail down and in some way roll it up around the boom and put it in the boat now, I can't, I, I can't take credit for designing the wind rider, <laughs> such that you could put the whole the main sail boom, and yeah. boom in the boat. Right. It just happened that it worked out like that, because <laughs> you can poke one end of the boom mm -hmm. way up into the It'll bow, fit. with the sail rolled up around it. But the problem is getting the sail rolled up around it. Let's start with the sail in the up position. Most people can get the sail up, even if it's flogging around on deck, loose, yeah, uh, 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 so long as the wind doesn't get into it and take it overboard, right. you can usually get the mainsail up without a great deal of difficulty. You have to pull on the halyard and let the sail feed into the bottom of the slot on the mast at the same time. That means that the rest of the sail is loose. It's a big bunt, as a sailor yes. would say. It's a big loose bunt of sail that the wind can get a hold of. But uh, usually setting the sail up, you can get into a sheltered place or you're, you're at the dock or on the beach or something like that. So let's say it's up and you're coming in now and you want to take the sail down. Well, if you let go of the halyard at a time when the boat is really out in the wind, 
the sail will start down and the wind will get a hold of it and pull it down out of the slot and blow it overboard. Now it's still attached at the halyard. Let's hope you haven't let the lower end of the halyard <laughs> loose. It's still attached at the head uh, and, uh, and it's still hooked onto the boom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and but you got a big problem on your hand if the wind on your hands if the wind is blowing, but there's a way to do it. That is, before you uncleat the halyard and start letting the sail down, take the fall of the halyard. This more sailor talk, the part of the halyard that you pulled on to get the sail up. That's a bunch of rope laying around on the floor in the boat. You can take that, coil it up into a coil about like garden hose size, you know, put it on the floor and step on it. Put at least one foot on that fall of the halyard. Now you can uncleat the halyard and the sail will come down only until you've stopped it with your foot. And that's probably about three or four feet three feet is better than four of the sail that will come down out of that slot. But the wind still can't get a hold of it because you got your foot on the halyard. The mast is containing the rest of it. It's in the slot on the mast. Now, if you're standing in the cockpit, now let's say I was standing here, I won't get up, but if I was standing here and I've got the boom over on that side, if I grab a hold of the boom about in the middle of the boom, and reach under the boom and grab the bunt of the sail. There's a big sloppy piece of it hanging down out there now because half, three feet of it's come down. You can grab that and pull it up under the boom. Wrap that double layer of bunt of sail over and even wrap it over your hand and wrap it around the boom to start with. Now, lift your foot up and get three feet more and start to roll until you've got that much rolled up around the mast. And then lift your foot up again and again. But in the meantime, your hands are getting tired. You got this nine foot hunk of aluminum with all this sail wrapped around it. Your hands are getting tired. OK, sit down, rest your arms, put the sail partly rolled up in your lap and put your elbows on it if you want to. Sit there. If the wind blows hard, you got control of the sail. Half of it's still left in the mast and half of it's wrapped around the boom. Rest a little bit, then pick it up and start to roll again. And the way Mike McGarrick does it, okay. <laughs> he lets it all go at once and he throws the boom and the sail up on his elbows and throws and throws and throws. <laughs> Doesn't even use his hands. Okay. But um, uh, Mike's not big, but he's strong and he uh, has okay. hands of steel, you know. All so, right, all right. So anyway, uh, uh, now after you've uh, you've rested your, your arms and your hands for a few minutes, you can, you can roll up the rest of it and uh, thereby have the sail stored around the boom Remove the halyard. You've already had to remove the sheet, okay? In order to roll up the boom, you have to remove the sheet first, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, take the take the gooseneck, the end of the boom, out of the mast slot, and then start to roll. And now you can slide it in the boat. Anyway, you can put the sail, you can put the mainsail in the boat, and put the hatch cover on to keep the keep the mainsail out of the sun. Uh, and so it doesn't need a, 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 a sun cover. You can't really get a, get a, a sun strip to work on a mainsail no, anyway. No, I had a sail cover made for mine. Yeah. yeah. And it works good. And then I, I, I put lugs, yeah. which, you know, messes up the aerodynamics, but it lets it fold. It doesn't, it doesn't mess it up much. I don't think, I figured it's worth it just yeah. to be able to come down and let it fold. Yeah. You and you have lazy hand, jacks. Lazy jacks. Yeah. Lazy jacks are great coming down going up it tends to want to catch the uh, battens and so you got to yeah. really fight that a little bit but yeah. uh, so it's a trade off there but it is nice to it keeps everything off the deck yeah it, it, yeah that's the way a traditional sailor would do it no no doubt but now you got the the the, the boom sticking out from the mast up there <laughs> in the sun and you got the lazy jacks containing the sail 
and the sail cover has to go on there. Over the sail, yeah. It's, over it's the sail, tricky. but under the lazy jack. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and mine wasn't made for the lazy jack, so I'm gonna get the little slots. Yes. But if I pull it down tight, I mean, you know, lazy jacks get yeah. some, you know, lift it up so you it's a little slack, it it'll go yeah. in. Yeah. And so when I got mine, I was living on a 34 footer. Uh -huh. And so when I set up the, the uh, wind rider, that my mind was the 34 footer, which had a, a lazy cradle. Oh. You come down and you zip it shut. So my mm -hmm. mind, so all the things I did oh. before I even put it in the water was actually mm -hmm. how I did it on the big boat, which yeah. now that I've had a smaller boat, I might have done something that's a little different. But at the time, I was just doing it big boat style. Well, you can do it either way. And, and it's worked no, out well no for No doubt. It, it, yeah. it, it works either way. It's just if you don't have the, 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 the slots, if you have the boat the way it came without slugs, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call Lugs. them, slides Lugs. that go yeah. <clears throat> uh, and you don't have a sail cover, you can handle it in stages by resting. Uh, roll up half the sail on the boom, as I described, but the trick of it, the b important part of it is when you, when you have only have about three feet of bunt hanging loose, grab the boom in the middle, take, hold it up there and reach under it and go up there and get as much of the bunt of the sail as you can and start rolling the belly of the sail, the really full part of the sail, get a, at least one full turn around the boom before you start rolling up the rest of it. And that'll take, that'll take the, uh, the, the bag out of it as you roll. Mm -hmm. And when it's rolled up, it's a nice tight bundle instead of having parts of the leech hanging out of the hole. <laughs> yeah. Wind starts getting it, it gets crazy. <clears throat> well, um, uh, I, one thing I've noticed that, that uh, pleases me a lot is that all you guys are doing stuff that anybody would do who loves this boat. And if you don't love your boat, you're not going to take the trouble to make it your own. But if you really love the thing... <laughs> That's the beauty of the Wind Rider. It is, it's, just, it's, a, it's a canvas for you to paint. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can mess around with all that stuff. You can do any of that. Uh, even cut the keel off and try to put in a centerboard. If you oh. do, send me some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> main sill cover, we did handling the main. Yeah, we did that. We just yep. did that. All right, then we got custom paddle and anchoring the last two. So custom paddle. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a, uh, my water here is, uh, is a small river. I'm about five miles from open water. And uh, I, I do a lot of uh, sailing in the lee of big trees all the way around the bank of the river, and uh, and so uh, uh, I've I've learned to to, uh, to read the wind, and at times it's important for me to get close to the shore, in order to grab a lift that is a favorable wind, uh, and so I'm often running aground. Just because you have a shoal, shoal draft boat doesn't mean <laughs> that you're not and, always running a ground. Still a foot and a half down there. Or <laughs> my fat ass and I'm loaded with camping gear, I close it to two foot. But, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, uh, even if you can go into two feet of water, you're, you, can, you can still run aground mm -hmm. because you're trying to get into shallow water more because you're shoal draft. Yes. So anyway, uh, you're sitting down in this cockpit. And uh, if you run aground, you got something to deal with, you know. The, the mud here is really bad. It's what we call pluff mud. Ooh. Uh, it's like kind of like snow. Okay. And uh, uh, it, it can be dangerous if you start trying to wade in it. I can see that. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if, uh, if you get stuck in the mud, it's nice to have a something on board that's long enough that'll allow you to push off even while you're sitting in the after cockpit. Mm -hmm. And so I built myself a custom paddle. It's, it's five feet long. And on one end of it, it has kind of a pusher. Let's take a picture of it when we... Uh, okay. It has a, the, a butt end of it that's kind of a pusher from the, pa from the main cockpit, from, from the, uh, the steering cockpit. I can usually take that thing over the side of the boat, push it down underneath the after cross beam and push on it and back the boat out of the mud. And if I can't, then especially if the wind is blowing hard and all that stuff, is another point. You ever, any kind of a jam you get yourself into, like being stuck in the mud, 
in a big wind and you can't push off. The wind, the, the wind is such that it has sailed you into the mud. The first thing to do is to roll up a jib. Any kind of a catastropop that happens, roll up the jib. Something breaks, you know. Uh, the dog jumps overboard after a duck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything, uh, roll up the jib. Uh, it'll if you let it flog. It not only uh, raises the anxiety level, mm. but it'll damage the sail yes, if you it let, will. let it flog in the wind. And uh, the mainsail, on the other hand, because of its full horizontal battens, it won't flog much in the wind. It has to be blown very yeah. hard for the main to flog. So anyway, uh, so you're stuck in the mud and you can't push off, uh, roll up the jib, and then get out of the cockpit and go up on the bow, and that'll pull part of the boat up out of the mud, the after end of the keel and the rudder will come up out of the mud if you're up forward and you can push off from there. And sometimes you can even push the boat around so that you actually tack the boat and now right, you've yeah. got the power of the wind to blow you off of the mud bank that you're stuck in. And the other end of the paddle is, is a big, very simple paddle to build. But uh, anyway, it has a, has a large blade and um, uh, I, I forgot to mention that on the mud pusher end of it, the upper end of the paddle, right under the mud pusher, I've designed in a couple of little hooks. So the thing also serves as a boat hook. Yes. Is when you're coming into a dock and you're sitting in the after cockpit with your feet on the pedals and that's the only way to steer, you've got a problem. <laughs> and that's one of the problems with the with sitting down in the boat mm -hmm. is that uh, when you're coming into the dock or trying to fend off of a piling or anything else, you're you're stuck in a cockpit. And uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes if, the, if you have a, a good big paddle handy and you're sailing into a predicament where you're going to get tangled up in somebody's dock or, uh, or uh, mangroves or mm -hmm. anything like that, if you've got a good big paddle that you can really reach into the water with from the after cockpit, you can back up on one side while the boat is turning toward that side and almost stop the boat but keeping it turning very tightly. So in, in panic positions, you can maneuver the boat very tightly if you have a big paddle. And you can also reach way outboard with it when you're trying to paddle in order to turn the boat or trying to back with the paddle. Uh, if you have a big paddle, it really helps. It wants to Jim has set it up. Oh, here comes that. Here comes the uh, the mud paddle. That's the mud paddle he made. That's good. Straight. Well, that's simple construction. The, uh, oh yeah, there's the see hooks. The, see the hooks. There. The hooks he's talking about. Nice big handle to hang on to there too. And then and a paddle on the end. This thing is just a sheet of quarter inch plywood. Yeah. And uh, an angle cut on the handle, and the handles. Uh, there's a, a three quarter by two and a half inch piece of uh, pine. No, I think that's a piece of spruce. If you had a piece of spruce, okay, it'd yeah, it'd lighter. be stronger. And uh, you can really reach out with that thing, uh -huh. paddle the boat, and you can turn it. I like by, that. By paddling from way out there while I, you're sitting. In I, I believe I'm making one of those. <laughs> And that wraps up episode six. We have one more episode left, and that'll be up in about a week. So thanks for subscribing, because <laughs> I'm going to take you bastard sailing. <laughs>